Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem is what effect does higher concentration of carbon dioxide have on the hemoglobin and here is a variants to choose from. And though today's video is going to be pretty short, I promise you that you are going to learn something new today and some information can be mind blowing for you. And let's read the first variant and it is variant A. It marks the hemoglobin for degradation. So let me explain you how many cells we have in our organism. It is 30 trillion. And let me write down this number. 30 million of millions. So three more zeros. This is going to be 30 trillions. And do you know how many red blood cells are in our organism? Also, let me write down this number. Here it is, 26. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. 26 trillions of cells in our organism is red blood cells. Isn't it mind-blowing that we have 30 trillion cells and 26 of them, 26 trillions of them are red blood cells. Those we have about 200 different type of cells and only one type of cells makes 83% of all all our cells. You can stop video here and check the Google and still you will find that about 80-83% by different estimations is just red blood cells in our organism. And all this 26 trillion cells circulate in our bloodstream every 30 seconds. So would be pumped by the heart, through the lungs and throughout our body every 60 seconds. And now you see that suggestion that high concentration of carbon dioxide would mark hemoglobin for degradation is just absurd. In this scenario we would live no longer than 60 seconds. Now let's move to the variant B, let's discuss it. It stimulates the red blood cell to make more hemoglobin. What is also interesting about red blood cells that red blood cells don't have nucleus. Can you imagine that 83% of our cells doesn't have nucleus? Here the average life expectancy of the red blood cells, again, on the average is going to be 120 days. At the very early stage, red blood cells in the bone marrow would have nucleus, but before they would be released in the blood system, they would be denucleated. This is true for humans, but many animals actually have their red blood cells with a nucleus, but humans don't have nucleus. And what is also interesting to know that many scientists now think that our blood is just another organ. And its function not only to take oxygen from our lungs and bring it to all muscles, tissues in our organism and organs, and to bring waste products like carbon dioxide back to lungs. The fact that red blood cells are denucleated is very interesting because imagine that when we get a virus, actually 83% of our cells cannot be a host for such a virus because they don't have nucleus and all the machinery for replication of the virus. And at the same time, red blood cell, just like any other cell in our organism, on its surface has hundreds of different receptors to which viruses may attach. So viruses can attach to such receptors, but they are not going to do any harm to our organism and red blood cells from this point of view would serve as vacuum machine for our organism and actually should be considered a part of our immune system. So not only white blood cells in our organs help to get rid of different pathogens, but red blood cells also play a significant role. Now let's return to our statement B again. So higher concentration of carbon dioxide stimulates red blood cell to make more hemoglobin. This is a wrong statement because red blood cells cannot produce hemoglobin when would be released in the 
blood because don't have nucleus. Now we're left with only three variants to choose from and we also can get rid of the answer E has no effect, this is not true. So high concentration of carbon dioxide does have effect so we have to choose between answer C and D and I know that many students confuse R and T state of the hemoglobin and hemoglobin is protein that consists of four subunits and we can find in the red blood cell about 300 million of hemoglobins and here's another mind-blowing information. This number which is 26 trillion we have now multiplied by 300 million this is how many hemoglobins we have and we have to multiply by 4 because each hemoglobin consists of 4 subunits and each subunit it was gene which was expressed and protein was produced and folded in this subunit and every second our organism would destroy 2 to 3 million of red blood cells and that means that 2 to 3 million red blood cells would be produced by our organism every second times 300 million times 4 in order to produce every polypeptide chain in every hemoglobin. Just few days ago I just finished listening to audiobook written by Russian surgeon and he compared our organism with biochemical tornado. I think this is the best description of what life is, what human life is. Now let's return to discussion of the R state and T state of the hemoglobin. I know that many students always confuse these two states because it is very easy to memorize them and it is very easy to forget. And today I want to offer you my mnemonic technique so you would memorize R and T state of the hemoglobin for the rest of your life. And this picture on the right is going to help me. When molecules of oxygen would bind to the heme group or in particular iron, so let me write down oxygen molecule here O2, O2 here, O2 here and another one here, we call that hemoglobin goes into the R state or relax state because such binding is going to change conformation of each subunit. And when oxygen would be lost, we call such state T state or tense state. So how to memorize which state is which T and R. Now let's take a look at this picture and you see two people scuba diving and now think for yourself if you would scuba diving and if you know that you have plenty of oxygen in your tank you would be relaxed. So R stands for the relaxed state when oxygen binds to hemoglobin and if you know that you don't have oxygen or very little you would be tense and in our organism hemoglobin always transit between these two states from relaxed to tense, from tense to relaxed depending on where the blood is. When it go from lungs to the tissues where there is a lack of oxygen then such hemoglobin would be relaxed and would change its state to the tense when oxygen would be released. But when it go back to lungs it's going to be tense but would take a state of the relax when would bind oxygen. Now let's read one more time our question. What effect does high concentrations of carbon dioxide have on the hemoglobin? And variant C offers us it induces the hemoglobin to adapt the R state. That means that it came in the tense state without oxygen and took oxygen from the tissues, which is wrong. Now let's check uh, variant D, it induces the hemoglobin to adapt T structure or T form or conformation and let's think about it. That means that it came in the relaxed form with oxygen bind and exchange oxygen for
for carbon dioxide. So release oxygen in the tissues and took carbon dioxide. So went from R state or relax to T state or tense. So hence our choice is going to be variant D. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.